السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته صباح هناك سنة خيرت and actually and today and our panel will be discussing about the role of the Somali diaspora youth organizations and their role in the society, Somali society, and where we fit in the structure. The comments you're getting, you're getting from actually uh, youth insiders who have been working with youth and who themselves are part of the youth. And in order to understand youth, first we have to, in order to understand the role of the youth in the Somali society, we have to understand the youth itself. Who are the youth? How old and how young are they? Where do they fit historically in the movements and campaigns and all the revolutions that happened before? Also, people who study politics and uh, actually talk about power. And in, in power, they divide it into four phases. And among those phases are the ability of setting the agenda. So in my uh, two minutes talk, I, I want to talk about the agenda, the youth's agenda. First, do we have an agenda? Does the youth have an agenda? And if they have an agenda, what is it? And who sets that agenda for us? Also, there we... Amor, your two minutes is up. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. <coughs> I think it, uh, Brother Omar mentioned a few things I wanted, but I want to go over the others. And really, the youth need two things. I couldn't agree more than anything, Professor Ahmed Samatar, what he said yesterday. Commitment. Do we have commitment? Yes or no? If we have, if it's yes, we can do something about here and back. Opportunities. Yes, we do have opportunities. But are we taking advantage for that? Or are we just standing outside and just talking, losing our time? That's the second. Money youth, there's no one is going to speak on behalf of you unless you come out and speak yourself. Say, this is what I need. Forget all the generation. Forget anybody else. What you did yourself? Everybody's getting degree? Getting married? Better life? Have a nice job? Live a suburban? Forget it. The community. I don't care. That's not going to work. If you want to do something in your community, get involved. Help me out. Talk to the youth. As a brother just did, get their attention. Say, this is what I want to do for myself and my community. Help me out. So speak yourself. So you can help yourself. You can help your community. You can help me back. The other thing is I want to really mention is a lot of times, if I ask you the question, say, how many youth left it to the United States going back to Somalia? Everybody's going to say, oh, 20. But I'm going to ask you, how many youth was killed? in 2008, in the streets of Minneapolis, Ohio, Toronto, Canada, UK, London. Tell me, why we have attention for only a small number? Since a lot of them are like, suffering, how many of the drop, drop school we have here? How many of us go? I have a statistics. The 20 percent of Somali youth have a higher education. Sickest of them, working, warehouse, standing in the streets, smoking a weed. Let's be honest. If we're not telling the truth, forget it. We, why are we, why we sitting here? Let's be honest to one another. To one of them, a gang is, 20% of the gang is street boys. So what are we waiting? That's the wake up for you. Think about it. Take this question. You have something to pay back in your community. Thank you, Mokhtar. All right, so I come. 
Um, I like how Muqtad ended with, you guys have something to pay back to your community. But before we even talk about paying back to your community by being involved in youth organizations, I want to mention that you have a lot to gain by being a part of youth organizations. Um, youth organizations, and I know there's a lot of people who are going <laughs> to disagree with me here, um, I think even more than getting a formal education ha play a very important role in the experiences you have in life. And when you are later on, you're going to graduate school, you're trying to apply for a job, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be asked about what you did outside the classroom, what you learned when you were in college. Nobody, you know, if you got an A in your anthropology class, that's great. But did you do research? Did you do internships? Were you involved in any leadership positions? So many businesses, so many companies want to know what you have to offer. And it's very easy to say that, you know, I'm a leader, but can you prove that through your track experience? Can you prove that you were involved? Can you show that you were involved in the Somali Student Association? Can you show that if you're interested in pre-law that you are part of some justice students for justice associations. If you're interested in working on international in international studies or relations, were you a part of Amnesty International when you were in college? If you want to do business, were you a part of future business leaders of America when you're in high school? If you one day want to be part of the UN, did you participate in Model UN? I think a lot of times um, I, I'm very glad that there are Somali student associations and I think they're a wonderful thing to be a part of, but there are so many organizations out there. And I know everybody has different opinions and everybody has different beliefs, but for every opinion you have and for everything you're interested in, there's an organization out there. And instead of just sitting there and talking about it, there's a probably 101 ways that you can get involved. And there's 101 ways that you can learn more about yourself and learn more about what you're in interested in and that you can give back to your community on a local level, you can give back to your community on a national level, and you can give back to your community on a global level. Thank you, Fatma. Um, uh, thank you. That was, that was amazing. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, I just, I have a lot in mind, but before that, I just want to raise two questions here. First one is that, what do we do after the meeting today? Um, we all sort of have some annual conferences that we go. It doesn't matter the place. But as a youth, I'm not talking to the adults here. I'm talking about the youth. What do we do after the meeting? We came here, know each other, like listen to our ideas. And then when we leave, we did not know each other. That's it. Oh, yeah, I know Abdullah is from Ohio. I've seen him in that meeting. And after that, nothing. So first, I want to suggest networking. I think that if we leave this meeting, it shouldn't be it that we should continue working together. And, uh, and, and secondly, I want to raise this question that I have seen yesterday at, and, and today in the meeting that whenever an audience asks a question about political that we're so for somewhat avoiding and saying that, hey, keep this in the, in the youth context. Like, do not, do, do not say so. If we keep avoiding this kind of stuff, I don't think, or ignoring those kind of stuff, I don't think that we are going to go any, any forward or, any, any, or anywhere else. So I think that we should not, as, as the professor said, he's here yesterday, that the truth is the key here. So if, if a girl or boy is sitting here asks a question about politi uh, political disorder that we have in our country, I think we should not avoid. Because if we, the youth, should be ignorant of the political disorder that is going on in our, in our country today, that we have nothing else to be like sort of participating in the, in the, in the process of um, developing the nation. Not that I'm majoring in political science, but I'm just saying that it's just something that we need, we need to talk about. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I'm going to throw out, um, if anybody has any questions for them, to please ask now, because we are limited in time. Assalamu alaikum. I don't have a question, but I have a statement rather to make or a comment. Uh, I've seen two of you already um, refer to the professor, but I 
uh, like you mentioned him in it. But the thing is, and I'm keeping this in the youth context, it's not, uh, we are Muslims first, all right? We are Muslims first. So the thing is, fine, he said a lot of good things that we should probably take, and, uh, but he's, the, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know if he's here. If, uh, if he's not, is he? Great, so I'm not slandering him. The thing is, he said a lot of things about Islam that we should definitely not take. And if someone is not good in their faith, there is no way we are going to take their messages. So I'm not, I'm not even concerned about the older generation. I'm concerned about you guys. How are you guys going to refer to someone who probably, I mean, said a lot of wrong things about Islam? And this is, again, in the youth context because we are Muslims first. So what do you guys think about the professor who said a lot of things about Islam? I mean, do you think he's a role model for us? I believe, I believe he's a real model for us. That this is the thing. Don't look the person what he said. He told you, look the things, the person. Don't look the personality. What he told you, take the something you need. If you don't need others, put aside. Why? One thing I really, really want to mention is I think you guys have a lot of interesting questions. I think this is an important topic, but there is the lunch time, there's the break time, and I really hope that for the sake of the youth who are sitting in this room and who really want to know how to get involved in their communities and who want to know how to be in different organizations and who want that experience, I would really ask if we could please stick to the topic that we have right now on board and hopefully <laughs> later on discuss this further. Um, Thank you very much. Dirk, if you could ask the question you had prepared. Hi. Uh, can, I, can I ask a quick question? Um, the, the last speaker here talked about what are we going to do next. I think when Saadia and Abukar and uh, all of us who were organizing this conference, we were talking about this conference, the idea wasn't to come and lecture each other and leave. The idea was how do we build effective working relationships across states so that we can deal with the common issues that we have. So it is, I think we need to come up with a way to say, what is it, how are you guys, especially the youth, how is it that you're going to take this forward and work together from here on? Thank you. No, it's for them to answer. Oh. Um, all right, um, I think that's a very wonderful point. I think what the best way to do this, and Mr. Fletcher referred to it in his um, lecture beforehand, is contact. I think the best thing this youth conference has offered us is a chance to network with people from so many different states who are involved in the same projects you have. Um, working with a youth organization, whether it's a Somali Student Association or anything, there's a lot of challenges and there's a lot of benefits. And there's the beauty of work being different people who have different ideas and opinions. One thing we can all take away from each other is we have different ways of coming to solutions. And taking the time during our lunch breaks, you know, after the conference was over last night, taking the time to talk to other people who've worked on projects and take their opinion and really listen to what's worked for them and to offer what's worked for you and to actually use it is one wonderful way to make sure that we're not just stopping at this conference. We're thinking of what we're going to do tomorrow. We're thinking of what we're going to do next week. We're thinking of what we're going to do next month. Can we um, short... Um, uh, for the questions, could we have like 30 sec uh, 20 seconds and if you guys could answer them quickly because we have 10 minutes to go. I'll Thanks. try to do it in 20 seconds. As the old adage goes, youth is are going to be the leaders of tomorrow. So my question to you guys is, when you th think about leadership, who do you look up to? When we talk about leadership, who are we looking to? That, that was your question, right? To be honest, when societies talk about leadership, they always blame them. And those who study Somali situation for the last two couple of decades say that Somalia faded because of lack of leadership. And many of the last lecturers who stood here before us said that. My belief is different than that. I believe that if societies are, if population of societies are strong enough, strong leaders are not necessary. 
Because leaders come from society. And if the society is strong, whoever comes from them will, be, will always be strong. And if you are not strong, then society is strong, and then they will set you the agenda, and we will go from there. That's to my assessment. I, I think I believe we had and we have a very good leadership, I believe. Especially, I'm talking of the youth. I'm not talking the older generation. I don't want to go back that. And the reason is we don't have uh, the problem is our older generation had. We don't have like something called about the clanism or all those stuff. We all the same. We all the brothers and sisters. That's what we believe. So that is the good thing. That's where we can take advantage. So lead in the right way. Try to compromise. Talk to the others. Sometimes we have to learn how to give up something. If the brothers disagree with me and I see that is going to create the barrier, me and him, I have to say, okay, brother, you're right. L lead me. I'm going to go with you. Or he's going to say, okay, brother, lead me. I'm going to go with you. If we're not going to work it that way, I don't think we're going to go anywhere. So we have to learn how to give up something you really cannot give up. B because of sick of community, sick of Allah, and sick of the youth. The original question was who our role models are. Um, I think there is always a lesson that everybody that you interact with in your life, there's always something you can take away from it. It doesn't matter if they're not as educated as you are. It doesn't matter if you have a better paying job than they do. It doesn't matter if this is somebody you've never met in your life. There's always something you can learn from others. And one of the best ways, I think, to be a leader is to be open to learning. If you're a leader, it doesn't mean that you've you know, reached the end point, you know, that's it, I'm a leader, there's nothing left for me to learn. Um, at the same time, I think one of the questions we should be asking ourselves is, looking at the youth here, everybody seems to be you know, either teenagers or above, um, and at this point, it's not so much who our role models are anymore, it's what kind of role models can we be? There's somebody in your life that you have the chance to influence, whether it's siblings, whether it's classmates, whether it's coworkers. And you can't really control what other people do or how they act as role models or how they carry themselves, but you can work on yourself and you can try to do your best to give a positive impact on your community. All right. Um. Um, yeah, I, I define as a uh, leader someone whose actions and words inspire someone. And uh, my, just answering your question, Omar, uh, specifically, uh, my role model is someone who is very more sophisticated and very truthful, which you guys all know is the most peaceful person who ever been on earth, is the prophet. No, I'm so loud, I'm so loud. Time for two more questions. All right, um, one comment and one question. The, the first comment to my Muslim brothers and sisters, to the quote-unquote practicing Muslim brothers and sisters, let us leave the judgment to the great one who will hold the gavel on the day of judgment. He might be a better human being than all of us. You know, Allah knows what we reveal and what we conceal, so I think it's shameful that we're all trying to attack him, and we invited him here to enlighten us. So y'all might not agree with me on this, but I just want to say this. We invited him. He's a dignitary. Let's respect him. If we don't agree with him, let's agree to disagree. But my question is to this gentleman from Ohio. I agree with you that if we don't start discussing the politics back home, nothing is going to happen. So I have my own ideas, but what are your ideas on why we're kind of afraid to speak about politics and, and what, what can we do to overcome that within the youth? Yeah, that's a great question. And just going back to what you said about the precautionary about the professor is that Imam Shafi, you guys all know him, when it was asked, hey Imam, how do you get this noble character, this amazing character that you have in Islamic society? And he said that people criticize me and I take the, their criticism so seriously that it may show me the real person that I am. So th guys, do not stop us if we criticize the professor, if we say something about, good about him. Um, going, back, going back to the question is that we sort of feel shame about being, um, getting involved in the political process. 
is that we think whenever we hear the word political with quotation marks, it's about Kabil. So that is what we're running up. And when, like me, I've never been involved in it. And that is why I'm, now I'm trying to, to get to know more and get involved. So I think if we keep doing what we're doing, which is avoiding it, it's not the solution. So I'm asking all, us, all of us together now, let's not run from it. Let's do something about it. Assalamu alaikum. And question, I, I just want to answer, uh, just support a little bit the answer that, and the question that was uh, what the youth should really focus. Um, to me, is um, the deen is first, your religion is first. And the second thing is education. And the third thing is to support your community. Um, and there was also um, questions about role model here. The role model should be, um, first of all, um, Allah. You have to obey him. And second thing is the, our commander, who is the uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the best model. And to me, you know, the youth should really focus those three things in order for us um, to succeed in this world and to help our brothers and sisters back home. So the deen is first and your other education which can really help you transit in this world, and the community that you want to build and where you want to live, your environment is very important. So I'm asking the, um, the panel if they really can focus on that and can give us some answers, how would they really support that? Thank you. I think the best way to support that is to make sure that those three things are never separate. If you're focusing on your dean, you should be focusing on your education. If you're interested in your dean, you should be interested in your community. And if you're getting an education, you should be working for your community. Or otherwise, you're getting an education, and you're working to live, and you're living to work, and you die, and there's nothing left. And you haven't contributed anything. And that doesn't satisfy anything in your dean. That doesn't do anything for your education. And that doesn't do anything for your community. So my personal belief is that in order to make sure that you, you succeed, you have to make sure you are able to fit everything and come with a whole picture. It's not a matter of I'm just going to put my dean to this side and I'm going to worry about my education tomorrow and I'm going to put my community on the side for tomorrow or the day after. It's a really hard thing to do, but you have to find a way to strike a balance and to make sure that all these three different components are a part of your life every second, every minute, every day. I wanted just to add uh, one thing. Uh, the first thing I want to say, believe yourself. Know who you are. Really, it is a very important. Go to the front of the mirror, see yourself. Are you just a dream or the real person? If you see yourself, you real person, you can do whatever you want. Have a dream, have a goals, set up yourself something, did something yourself, rather than just walking and running. Because if you cannot do something yourself, you cannot do anybody nothing. Respect to yourself. If you want to get respect, respect to the others. <laughs> If you respect yourself, you will get respect to others. And respect to the others because you want to get respect. You don't want to disrespect anybody. So why are you disrespecting the others? So respect yourself and get respect to the others, and that will be, you know, work for you. So set up something and help out. Always, Allah said, help out. Whatever you can. Contribute something in the community. It doesn't matter. If you did something a good, you will get back. But one day, it doesn't matter when is that. So just to pay your time, pay your effort, money, help you out. There's a lot of need. You have a lot of opportunity, scholarships, financial aid. It's ab available for you. But thank you those who are in the back, who doesn't have and nothing, who doesn't know even how to write and how to read. Then you have this whole thing. Is, and you still complaining, still com stop complaining. Thank you, Allah, and go for it.
And I know because of the time shortage and the constraint, we might not be able to get every single point that we had. But I just want to emphasize the importance of the youth understanding the potential of, or, of organized youth. If we are organized, our potentials are, would be a lot. We could do a lot of things. And I know because of the younger generation and their lack of experience, our positions could be swayed by others, you know, into sometimes counter, counter positions to our interest. So for the youth, I would say this. In order for us to do things, first we have to understand, get together and know each other and define our agenda and where we are headed. And if we don't have that agenda, and the agenda was already set by people who are already get us into reach that we are in for last 20 years, we're not going anywhere. So guys, let's be frank to each other. I know the time is short, we might not get to every point, but again, it has been such a pleasure to be here with all of you guys. Thank you. Uh, the brother said thank you so much and to put this together and to bring us I think this is not gonna be the last and let's have as the brother said have a contact to one another Let's make a follow-up Go the person you really want to talk to him. You have a chance Don't leave in this event unless you have at least 10 or 15 people contact information So you're gonna get there um, actually, we, ha we are c have to cut you guys off, but they will all come back during lunch hours to talk about all the questions you guys have and whatever they had. I th I'm pretty sure they did not have a chance to tell you what they had in mind about um, this organization and what they have encountered. So please, um, we have to go right now, but inshallah, during lunch hours, if you guys can all come back and let them have this opportunity to talk to you guys, we will leave you.